Hello, we are the photonics team of the Institute of Microwaves and Photonics at the FAU Erlang-Nürnberg and we welcome you to our Fiber Break Grating Fabrication Lab. So come on in and let's take a closer look at the setup, laser and the control of the inscription process. Of course, once we enter the lab, safety measures have to be taken since we use a high power laser. A fiber break grating, for short FBG, is a periodic index change in the core of an optical glass fiber. Light with a wavelength that fulfills the break condition will get reflected by the grating. You probably have heard all this in one of our photonics lectures. The first step is to turn on the laser and check the power settings. The excimer laser that we are using is a pulse laser working on krypton monofluoride gas and has a laser wavelength of 248 nanometer. That's in the UV region. Before we can start the laser, we have to do a gas exchange because the laser gas degrades over time. Therefore, we can start the automatic gas exchange where the old gas is removed and the laser head is filled with new gas. Once the gas exchange is done, we close the gas bottles and we can start lasing. Well, not so fast. Let's have a closer look at the optical setup first. You can see the excimer laser next to an optical table. On the table is a setup consisting of lenses and mirrors to form and steer the beam. The beam will pass an adjustable slit aperture, which can be closed or opened manually. This controls the width of the beam and therefore the length of our FBG. After hitting a second mirror, the beam is directed towards the focusing lens, which will focus the beam to the core of the photosensitive fiber. The fiber in which we want to inscribe the fiber break grating is a single mode glass fiber made from silica and doped with germanium to generate higher photosensitivity. The fiber is held into place by two clamps on a movable stage. For the laser adjustment, we first use a special adjustment fiber which is connected to a power meter, so we can objectively check how good our alignment is. The small laser with the blue box is our pilot laser. Now that we explained the main components of the setup, let's start lasing! Now we see the beam of the excimer laser, made visible by a piece of paper. Fun fact! The paper fluoresces blue because of the UV light. Let's check the beam path. We can see that we are already hitting the fiber with the blue beam. We know that we are hitting the fiber because we see a diffraction pattern at the screen. Looking closely, we can observe the small focus of the beam exactly at the place of the fiber. By tuning the focusing lens, we will also change the angle with which the beam hits the fiber. To correctly align the fiber, we also need to adjust it so that we exactly hit its core. A second parameter we can adjust is the focusing length. To see how good our adjustment is, we will use the power meter. Once we are happy with the alignment of the excimer, we switch on the red pilot laser. See, it's red. It will pass the second mirror and hit the fiber. Now we adjust the pilot laser so that we will hit exactly the same spot as the excimer laser. This is because later on, if we change the fiber, we can't switch on the excimer to check the alignment. So we will use the pilot laser to find the correct fiber position, since it will not inscribe any reflective index change in the fiber. This looks perfect now. Before we can start, we need the last important part, the face mask with the period that will determine the break wavelength of the grating. 
We here use a face mask with a period of 1064.5 nanometer, which will result in a Bragg wavelength of approximately 1540 nanometer of the inscribed grating. The face mask is installed right in front of the fiber. If we turn on the laser, the beam will pass through the face mask and generate an interference pattern after the face mask. The first order interference will form the grating right inside the fiber core. The pilot laser also generates an interference pattern after the face mask. The face mask needs to be aligned very carefully, as you can see here, so that the first order interference will be maximized. Now we are ready for inscribing grating in the fiber. Oh wait! We have to prepare the fiber first. Therefore we need to remove the coating and perform a cleave to get a perpendicular fiber end phase, which will serve as a reference of the reflectivity. For that we use a fiber cleaver. Also, we have to remove the protective coating from the part of the fiber where we want to inscribe the grating in carefully and clean this part with an isopropanol soaked tissue. Now let's insert the fiber into the clamps. This has to be done carefully to not break the fiber. To determine the reflectivity of the FBG and monitor the inscription process, we use a setup consisting of an erbium doped fiber amplifier as a broadband light source, connected to a fiber coupled circulator, that guides the light to the photosensitive fiber. The back reflected light from the FBG passes the circulator again and is detected by an Optical Spectrum Analyzer, OSA for short. If no grating is inscribed, we will only get the back reflection of the characteristic light source spectrum from the perpendicular fiber end face. Now we only need to check the height of the fiber with the pilot laser. If the bright spots above and beyond the fiber appear the same size at the screen, we hit exactly the middle of the fiber. This looks really good. We use MATLAB to control the laser and the number of laser shots. We set the shot number to 2000 and start the laser emission. The laser is started and the inscription takes place. Afterwards, the laser will turn off and we can check the result at the OSA. Before inscription, the spectrum is flat. During inscription, the grating forms and we will get a back reflection at the wavelength fulfilling the Bragg condition. Our grating appears and grows. Part of the broadband light is now reflected at the refractive index change in the fiber core. We nicely can see the main peak and side lobes of the uniform grating that we inscribed here. We can now repeat this process until our grating reaches the desired reflectivity. This time the pilot laser is switched off. Again. For first check, we will have a look at the OSA. We 
can also determine the Bragg wavelength of the FBG directly with the OSA. Here it is at 1540.77 nanometer. In the last step, we also look at the inscribed grating and the measurement data at the computer. Here you can see the measurement curves from before the inscription and of the two inscription steps we have performed. We see that after the first inscription, our grating was close to 40% reflectivity and after the second process it has 58% reflectivity. The FBG looks great. Good work! See you next time in our laser lab.